This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is another DIY project. This time, we're going to build ourselves a wind simulation kit for our sim. This sim, this wind sim, is going to be physics-based, and as we build up speed in the car, the fans are going to build up speed and blow more air, giving you a new sense of speed, a new level of immersion to your sim rig. Now, this is a very easy project that anybody out there can do. Now, I did do live versions of building this, and it took me hours, and I went through plenty of trial and error despite it being an easy project. But I think in this clean video here, we're going to make it really easy. We're going to go step by step, everything you need to do to know to build your own wind simulator. Now, a while back, our last DIY project, it was an LED light strip. It was controlled by an Arduino Nano. Now, that little board was controlled by SimHub. Well, SimHub, they actually control a lot more than just an LED light strip. They do displays, button box, shaker motors, and wind simulation. So once again, we're going to be using SimHub, and this time we're going to be using an Arduino Uno board, which is a bigger, a little bit more expensive board, but we're going to get a lot out of this. So one of the, my favorite reasons for doing this is this wind sim, this is the kind of thing that when you look at a commercial simulator, you look at a really high-end simulator, these are the kind of things, the kind of tricks that they use on those simulators to really justify that massive expense that they might be. When you go to Disneyland or Jurassic Park and you're on any kind of a 3D ride, they're using wind as one of those sensory inputs. They're blowing fans on you to give you more immersion, to give you more sense of speed and action. We're gonna get the same thing out of our simulator. So let's talk about the parts. And, and I think with a lot of DIY projects, you have the easy way or the, the, I should say, the cheap way. And then you can also do the high expensive way, depending on your preference. And I kind of went a hybrid or started out one way and then turned another direction. So let's talk about the parts that they recommend. First of all, this is a SimHub project, just like our LED light strip. So you are going to need a copy of SimHub. They're donation based, which means you can give them a couple bucks or you can give them a lot of money. And at this point, with this being my second project, I almost feel like I need to give them more money. But I already have a copy of SimHub and that will work for the WinSim and the LED light strips. Now, if you go to the SimHub website and you go to the help and community section under documentation, you can scroll all the way down to shake it for wind simulation. And that's where you'll find the list of parts and basic instructions on what you need to do. And I will say this is an area I think that SimHub could improve. As much as they do so many wonderful things, some of their documentation leaves you doing a lot of guesswork. So I had some trial and error to get these running the way I wanted them to do, but it did finally work in the end. So like I mentioned, you can do it the, the inexpensive way, or the more expensive way. On the low end, you could build this kit up for probably about $40. In my case, I ended up going with name brand parts, expensive fans, and I'm in at about $88.79 plus the 3D printed parts. So just the parts I had to purchase were $88.79. So let's talk about those parts, starting off with the Arduino Uno board. I went with the name brand version. That cost me $13.98, but I think you can pick up a generic one for about five or six bucks. You also need an Adafruit Monster Shield. Those go for $22.86 when you buy the brand name version. And I think you can get those for about $10 if you went generic. Now, when it comes to the fans, the size of your fan, or I should say we're using 120 millimeter fans just like you'd find on your computer. The expense, the, the power, the strength of the fans is actually going to affect the output of the wind sim quite a bit. When I first got this going, I bought some cheap fans. These were like $8 each. Turns out they only blow at about 50 CFM. That's what they're rated at, 50. Well, I can barely feel the wind at all. I ended up buying a second set of fans. These are double the power at 100 CFM, cost me like 12 bucks a fan. Yeah, it was an improvement, but it wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted to feel that wind blowing through my hair. So in the end, I threw those away and I bought these Whoppers. These are 200 CFM brushless server fans and they cost $20.98 each. So two of them makes $41.96. Then finally, you're going to need yourself a 12-volt power supply. These go for about $10, and then you're going to need any finishing parts like the 3D printed shrouds 
or the screws to hold it on, or maybe even a fancy little box to hold your Arduino board, but those are all optional. You could do this without any of those parts. A ducting mechanism will direct the air more than if you left this open. Now the design from SimHub, it included a 3D printed duct and protector on the back. And I printed those and I actually am gonna include the drawing. So one thing I'm gonna do with this project, I'm gonna write out all of the steps one by one. I'm also gonna give you all the drawings that I use. So I started with these and in the end my mount broke. So I redesigned the back plate, made my own mount, and I'm gonna include both the original drawings and mine. In the end, I also didn't like that the Arduino board was just sitting out on the own on its own, so I made a box to enclose it. And I will make those drawings available if anybody wanted to use the same kind of enclosure. So that gives you an idea of the kind of parts you're going to need. Again, I'm at 88.79 plus printing. In printing time, I'm looking at I'm looking at almost four solid days of printing on my printer. It took about 12 hours to do this front, 12 hours for that one about six hours for each of the backs. The mounts took another four hours each, and then this box probably took a full day with the front and back. But it did give it a clean, finished look, and you could redesign this to get more channeling of the air if you really wanted to. So let's talk about what it takes to actually build this thing. At this point, let's say you've ordered, you've got your Arduino Uno, you've got your Adafruit Monster, you've got all the parts. Let's just start talking about what it takes to put it together. Starting with step one, insert pin connectors into the Arduino board. The board I purchased came with some extra connectors that I did this with. Step two, place the motor shield onto the pins. You can see the direction from the diagram on the SIM hub instructions. Just take your time and it should fall right into place. Step three, Carefully solder the connector pins to the shield. Step four, add the power jumper to the motor shield if it wasn't installed with it. Step five, isolate and prep the fan power and ground wires. You can ignore the signal wire. When looking at a typical three wire fan, the middle wire will be the positive power and the left wire on the keyed side of the plug will be the ground. Step six, insert power and ground into positions M1 and M2 on the motor shield with the ground being the inboard connector. Positions one and two are on the power or USB side of the board and positions three and four are on the back side of the board if you wanted more fans. Step seven, plug the power supply into the Arduino board and then plug that into your wall or surge protector, whatever. Step eight, plug the USB into the Arduino. Step nine, plug the USB into the computer. Step 10, turn on SimHub software. Step 11, on the left side, click on Arduino. Step 12, on the top menu, click on My Hardware. Step 13, open Arduino Setup Tool. Step 14, on the left side under General, give your WinSim a title. Step 15, scroll down to Shake It Adafruit Motor Shield V2 and click on one, and then make the PWM 400. Step 16, on the right side under board, select Arduino Uno, and under serial port, you should now see your Arduino Uno. Click that as well. Step 17, click on upload to Arduino, and when that is finished, click okay, and then close the setup tool window. Step 18, on the left side of SimHub, click on Shake It Motors, and then on the new top menu, click on Motors Output. Step 19, now you want to enable the Force Feel Pad, and then also enable Arduino Motors and Fans. 
On a side note, under Arduino motors and fans, it will show four motors connected. And for force field pad, it will show disconnected. Step 20. Click on the drop down for Arduino motors and fans. Step 21. At the top are channels 1, 2, 3, and so on. We are using channels 1 and 2, and we'll be turning on effects for both channels 1 and 2. Turn on acceleration g-force, deceleration g-force, gear shifts, road impacts channel 1 for front left, and channel 2 for front right, and then finally speed. Step 22, click on the output tuning menu. Now this is an area where you're actually gonna have to play with the numbers just a little bit. So I can tell you my numbers right off the bat. They're five and 15, but you've got two different numbers that will control and affect the minimum starting point and the overall speed or power of the fans, starting with the threshold, remove smallest effects, meaning the minimum effort to start the output on the device from zero to 100. So it's sort of like a linearity to an extent. So instead of it starting at one mile an hour, it's waiting till 20% of your speed before they even start the fans. And considering that the very beginning of speed working its way up to 100 and it will match that just like a linearity setting on a brake pedal. The other setting is the minimum force, raise output for smallest effects. Minimum force when the output is started. This is intended to balance devices not starting or too weakly at low voltage output. Now, I don't even understand what that means, but it seems like that second setting actually affected the overall power sent to my fans, which you can look at the little output menu, which we'll cover in just a moment. So step 23 is actually the fun part. This is when you're actually gonna wanna hold these fans. You're gonna wanna watch your fingers. You don't want them in the blades, but we're gonna start testing the operation of these. So up at the top, there is a test now button for channels one and two. And if all goes well, when you click that button, you will feel your fans spinning for a quick burst. Next to that output tuning menu, you can also see that graph with the signal strength being sent to the fans. The first column being channel one and the second being channel two. If you're satisfied with the output, you can move on to step 24. And if not, go back to step 22 until the desired effects are achieved. Step 24, add the 3D printed fan shroud and fan cover to the front and back of the fan. I use the standard fan screws to hold them on. Step 25, add the lower mount. Add the nut and bolt to hold the mount to the fan and you're good to go. Step 26, attach the mount to the rig. I use two wood screws per mount on the left and right uprights of my monitors. Step 27, fire up your favorite SIM hub compatible SIM. Step 28, Enjoy the wind in your hair. Well, if you have hair, I don't get to enjoy the wind in my hair, but I certainly did feel the wind at speed from this incredible wind simulator. I am so glad I built this project. This is one of those kind of additions. Again, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the show, when I think of commercial sims, I think of professional sims, the kind of sims that might cost you 50, 60, $100,000 and up. These are the kind of effects that those guys are gonna add to the sims to really give you more sensation of speed, to give you more immersion. When you think about a simulator, even if you add motion, you're still missing a certain amount of speed sensitivity, g-forces for sure. This gives you that sensitivity of speed, a sense of movement. As the wind is coming at you, you feel like you are being moved forward. And I have to tell you, it's a very cool effect. Now it's not perfect. These speed up really good when you get accelerate, but when you hit the brakes, they don't slow down very well. So if you really, really are sensitive to it, they're not 100% perfectly accurate, but again, it is so well worth it. When you think about $80 and you're doing the kind of upgrade that you would again expect from a $100,000 SIM. The other thing for me is, it is just this wonderful air conditioning system for my rig. In summer, I overheat. When I run in VR, I overheat, and this is gonna keep you cool. And I gotta tell you, when I started using it, I would be fine when I was racing. And then as soon as I would come into the pits or crash or stop for whatever reason, 
all of a sudden I'd find myself overheating because these had come to a stop and stopped cooling me. So they certainly do their job very well for that. In the end, it was an excellent project. It was very rewarding. It was relatively easy. The hardest part, I have to tell you, the hardest part was dealing with the documentation. As good as SimHub is, as good as their documentation is and the fact that they cover a hundred different things that you can do there, there's a lot of information there. When it came to the wind sim, I did find some of the help, some of the how-to really not being that good. So I didn't know what a, num a lot of the numbers were doing. I had problems left and right. But in the end, if you follow my 28 steps, I think we've made it pretty easy. Um, the other thing that I did mention briefly was the 3D printed box that I made for mine. I didn't like the Arduino board being just loose. So I made a housing. I mean, that's something that you can do extra. And again, when I talk about it being $80, that didn't include any of the 3D printed parts. So these really didn't cost me very much. I mean, that probably cost me like $8, $6 in plastic, if that. It was just the amount of time it took to print. And in the case of the box, designing the box or the adaption to the fan, the time I spent. But really, it was a very affordable project. And again, anybody out there can do it. And I hope these steps will make it that much easier. I'm sure there's somebody out there who might put in a comment here, giving you more suggestions for different settings that might even be better than mine. Mine are what worked for me with very limited knowledge and, and fairly limited testing. I'll probably do more testing over time, but these numbers should get you up and running if you choose to do this same project at home. You might need a higher, uh, that second setting, was it threshold, was it the uh, minimum force. You might need a higher minimum force with smaller fans. I had to turn mine down to 15 and I believe it was because of these monster 200 CFM fans. So the next part of this is we are going to do a giveaway. We are going to have a gleam contest where you can earn entries into the drawing to actually win this actual setup right here. This is the giveaway set. Orange and blue fan, sim pit logoed uh, box for the Arduino, power supply, USB cable, everything you need. All you have to do is plug it in on your end, install SIM Hub, and you have a wind sim, just like I have on my rig. So we are gonna do a contest. To enter that contest, all you have to do is be part of our patron group. All those guys get automatic entries into the big drawing. And then the community is going to go to our Gleam. There's a link down in the bottom of the description of this show. Click on that. It'll take you to Gleam. It'll show you all the different ways that you can enter. If you would like to get this, compliments of the Sim Pit, all you have to do is follow that Gleam contest link and you could win. Now, if you want to follow this project, I have put the steps in the description of the show as well, as long as YouTube will let me write all that text. I will also make the files available. If you would like a copy of the original 3D printed files, if you'd like a copy of my modified files and my box file, all you need to do is you send me an email, Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com, and I'll send you all the files for your own 3D printed version at home. But you don't even need those. Those are sort of like the bonus. You could have done any kind of little tubing or air conditioning on the fan. I have friends who built this without any ducting, and at 200 CFM, you're still gonna feel the air. I hope this made this project easy. I hope that you'll follow along and build one for yourself, and I wish you the best of luck in winning this set here. Be sure to thumbs up if you like this show, thumbs down if you hated it. Tell a friend if you want to help us grow and get out there and do some sim racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.